Hello and welcome back to The History Freak. In this video I will be talking about Anne Stanhope, later Anne Seymour, a woman from the Tudor period who has been described as being for a time the most powerful woman in England. Certainly she's an interesting person who it's suggested was quite unlikable and is not very positively remembered. If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to this channel and press that notification button and you can watch our back catalogue of videos and learn heaps more about fascinating people from the Tudor period. Okay, let's crack on and learn about Anne. Anne is thought to have been born in 1510. Her mother was a noblewoman and was a descendant from King Edward III. Her father was a knight. She was their only child, although she did have some half-siblings. The year after she was born, her father died and her mother would in time remarry. Not a huge amount seems to be known about her early life, but it's thought due to her mother's connections to royalty, Anne would have spent a lot of time at court and she may have been a maid to Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. It's likely while she was at court that she would have first met her future husband, Edward Seymour. Edward was about ten years older than Anne, and he had been about the court a lot, and at the age of just fourteen he had a position in the king's sister's household. His career continued to rise, and he seemed to develop somewhat of a friendship with King Henry. But Anne was not Edward's first wife, that was Catherine Philol. Catherine gave birth to two sons during her marriage. But here's a scandal for you. It was suggested that these boys possibly were not in fact the sons of Edward, and that she may have had an affair with her father-in-law, John Seymour, which would, if it were true, make the boys Edward's brothers and not his sons. The whole thing seems a little mysterious, and it's hard to know how much truth is in this story. But the suggestion was a disaster for Catherine. Her family were disgraced by it, and this was bad news for her because she was set to inherit a lot from her father, but she was now excluded from her rightful inheritance. She was possibly forced by her family and Edward to go and live in a convent, and it seems she died while still quite a young woman. It's surprising in a way that Edward would in time rise so high and be considered for a time the most powerful man in England, considering the scandal he had been associated with. Scandal was a big deal back then, like it is today, and a person's career at court could be over quickly. The fact that he was able to bounce back, but also that his sister was able to become queen, is interesting. It seems by 1535 Edward and Anne were married, making Anne a Seymour. Anne had no intention of playing stepmum, she wanted little to do with the sons from Edward's first marriage. The fact that there was doubt about if Edward was really the father probably helped. Anne wanted her children with Edward to be the ones to benefit from inheritance and titles. Was this mean, or was this just being a good mother? Well, probably somewhere in the middle. She can't really be faulted for putting her children first. At this point, Henry VIII was still married to Anne Boleyn, and Edward's sister Jane was one of her ladies. But the following year, the fortunes of the Seymours would rise massively, when Henry had Anne Boleyn executed, and he married Jane Seymour. This was great news for the whole family. Edward's career grew rapidly, with honours and positions of privilege and wealth that would come with it, which of course was good news for Anne. Anne became pregnant around the same time as the new Queen, and I always wonder if Anne and Edward were actually more interested in the Queen's baby than their own. Of course they were excited and happy, but they could have more children but this baby the Queen was carrying was a prince or princess, and which one was of vital importance. 
This would have been such a nervous and agonizing wait for the family. Henry's two previous queens had both failed to give him a son, and things hadn't gone well for them. If Jane were to have a boy, they were set up better than they ever could have hoped for. Edward and Anne would be uncle and aunt to a future king. After a long and difficult labour, their prayers were answered on the 12th of October when Jane gave birth to Edward, who would go on in time to become King Edward VI. Fun fact, on the same day, Anne gave birth to her child, also a boy, and he was also named Edward. I can only imagine the level of triumph Edward and Anne must have felt that day. Things soon turned sour, however, when Queen Jane died less than two weeks after the birth. At the age of two, their own son Edward died, which must have been a time of great sadness. But Anne kept having babies. In fact, she had a massive ten children with her husband. It must have felt like she was forever pregnant. Although they suffered loss, the couple continued to rise at court. The titles and positions of honour kept coming. Anne was a lady-in-waiting to Henry's queens, which was a very high position. They kept themselves good with the king and with their nephew. The future looked good, although they would have been highly aware that if anything happened to the prince, it could all change. Henry VIII died in 1547. With the new king still only a child, he was unable to rule alone. So Henry did not name a protector, not wanting to give too much power to any single man. Instead, it seems he wanted a large group of men to make sure his wishes were followed, make decisions together, and that they would act as a counsel to his son. It seems that changes were possibly made to the will, as Edward Seymour, like a kid in a sweet shop, started to give himself lands and titles, including making himself Duke of Somerset. But crucially, with support of friends who he no doubt made all sorts of promises to, he became protector to the new king, which was not what Henry had wanted. Edward Seymour was now like a king himself, and that meant Anne, as his wife, was also in a position of great power. So how much was Anne behind all of this? There does not seem to be clear evidence about any involvement Anne had at the time, but I do love to think she was whispering in her husband's ears in the shadows. Anne was a proud and determined woman. There is no way I can imagine she was sitting back while all this was happening. One problem the couple faced was the younger Seymour brother, Thomas. Thomas wanted his own power, and he tried to get influence over the young king. Tensions were growing between the Seymour brothers, and more was to come. Henry's sixth wife had been Catherine Parr, but before she married the king, she had had a very close relationship with Thomas Seymour. The two were married very quickly after the death of Henry, which Edward Seymour was not happy about, and neither was Anne. Anne was described as being so proud that she was unlikable. This diva loved to be in her high position, and she wanted no other woman threatening that. Rank became a big topic of conversation. It seems who walked first and in what order was a big deal, and there were stories that Anne may have made sure to walk ahead of Catherine Parr to show her importance. While this seems such nonsense on one hand, it's quite fun to think of Anne and Catherine getting so worked up over it. It seems Anne was in the wrong here, as Catherine was former queen, but I kind of love her for trying. But the drama didn't end with just walking. There was a huge hullabaloo over jewels. Catherine wanted jewels that were given to her as gifts returned, but unkindly, Edward and Anne Seymour refused. It's no wonder with behaviour like this that many didn't like them. Around 1549, less than three years since the death of Henry VIII, Edward Seymour started to lose his grip on power. He was being blamed for problems the country faced. He was called a traitor and was removed from position as protector. And for a time, both him and Anne were placed in the tower. 
clever Anne, though, saw she needed to get in good with important people, and she helped Edward get released, and he rejoined the council, so it seems not all was lost. But Edward seemed to struggle under the new power system, and it even seems he had some dispute with the king over Princess Mary's refusal to accept the new laws about religion. For the most part, it seems he had always maintained a good relationship with King Edward, so to fall out now was very unfortunate. Under possibly false accusations, Edward was arrested and placed as well as Anne back in the tower. Edward would in fact end up being executed on Tower Hill while he was in his early 50s. What a fool this was for Edward. How Anne felt about this does not seem to be well known. She was presumably very upset to lose her husband, as well as the father of her children, and of course upset to lose that lovely power she had enjoyed so much. Anne remained in the tower for some time after his death, but she was eventually released and she remarried. It seems she was happy to stay out of drama from this point onwards, probably choosing to focus more on her family. Most of her children lived long lives, and she was a grandmother. Anne died in 1587, a whopping 35 years after the death of her first husband. She was buried in Westminster Abbey. So that's it for this video about Anne, I really hope you enjoyed it. I've always thought she's a really fun character from the Tudor period.